the activity we're going to do today is an interactive lecture and discussion about demystifying how to come up with a scientific question. And from that scientific question, that then builds a recipe for scientists to use to investigate their ideas. So to get started, we really need to have a common understanding or agreement about a definition of science. So let's have the students take a five minute non-graded quiz and working by themselves, they write down their definition of science. We go over their definitions and we think about common elements they keep bringing up. Molly? Um, I said science is the continuous process of observation, asking questions, making theories, and repeating them, kind of like detective work. Detective work. So there's investigation in there that's very important. You said repetition. What about somebody else? How about a def another definition? Let's start to put out key elements that we think are important. Yeah. Um, I talked about cause and effect, so explaining what causes phenomena, and then just kind of finding out what the effects of it. Great, that's really important. So you're invest that's, what's, that's, that's what you're investigating, is the relationships between sort of cause and effect. We go over their definitions, and we think about common elements they keep bringing up, the study of the natural world, phenomena, but what comes up again and again, the relationship between factors, cause and effect. And we pull that out, and we talk about how important it is that all science investigations are looking at some aspect of cause and effect. And those are the first two ingredients in our recipe to build a question. I've found through interacting with students many times that there's an intimidation factor in science, and that comes from using really long, jargony words. And scientists like to do that. And scientists in different fields have come up with different words to mean cause and effect. And so what we're gonna do is do a little practice where we're going to put a cause and effect on the whiteboard and we're going to ask the students for synonyms from different fields and their exposure, different understandings for cause and effect. Okay. Anybody? Raise your hand. Yes, Molly. A mechanism. A mechanism. Mechanism for cause, right. I like that one. Anybody else? Cause and effect, yes? I'd say outcome for effect. Outcome, I love that. You know where that's used a lot? In economics. It's not used in my science, but outcome is really an important one for social science. Actually, in conservation biology too, they actually say what they'll, say, what they'll use is intervention. Because it's purposeful. I would never use intervention in my field. But that's what they use, because that's something, it's an action taking place, and they look for an effect. So now that we have multiple synonyms for cause and effect, those general words, cause and effect, are actually subjects and objects. And you ask the students what links a subject and an object in a sentence. They kind of look stunned for a second, and it is that easy. The answer is a verb. So let's think of some verbs that can be used to link. Verbs can be used, any of the verbs you can think of in a sentence. Leads to, okay, leads to. Impacts. Impacts, that's used a lot. I said one earlier, alters. So now we know that there are three ingredients to a scientific question. A cause, an effect, and a verb. So now we're gonna ask the students to come up with their own scientific question. They get into small groups, two or three, and they're each assigned a different animal. And in that question, they need to have the three ingredients, a cause, effect, and a verb. And that animal can either be the cause or the effect. So two dissertation questions so far. How about you guys? Um, so we asked, what is the impact of ocean acidification on seagrasses' rate of growth? That is a great question. They're asking about that question, they're asking that about seagrasses, they're asking about coral reefs, they're asking about salt marshes, they're asking about mangroves, oysters right out here. You guys, just in five minutes, have nailed one of the most important questions right now being addressed in marine ecology. That should give you a lot of confidence. Now, let's keep all the words in your sentence, but switch the cause and effect. So reword that for me. 
How does the rate of growth of seagrass impact ocean acidification? Wow. Okay, same words in that sentence. But what you do for the next five years is very different. Okay, so we're to, that would change. We're going to go here and get rid of that. It would change what was on the axis. So we're going to bring seagrass growth here. Let's just put seagrass presence. That might be easier to work with. That's what an advisor does. It's just a little tweaking. So you came up with a cool idea, and I was like, that one, from my experience, would be easier to work with. And then we'll take acidification up here. Very few people have looked at this, but this is interesting because you're asking, do these natural ecosystems buffer climate change? And people are wondering about that. They do with carbon. Plants naturally sequester carbon through photosynthesis and put it in the roots and it doesn't decompose. And that helps us deal with the overabundance of carbon in our atmosphere because they're storing it like a bank account. Okay, next. Who wants to go? Over here. All right, our group had grouper. So our question was, how does increased fishing pressure off the coast of North Carolina impact grouper size? Okay, great. So we have specific location. And the idea is that fishing pressure is increasing and how it affects not just the, not the grouper population or the density, but the body size. Do you guys have a prediction about what might be happening? I've heard over time that Goliath grouper specifically has increased or decreased dramatically because of fishing pressure. And now what you used to see grouper as large as this ceiling floor almost have decreasing to very small body sizes. Right, so the idea is that large body sizes are selected for in the industry, and that would change the body size in the grouper. So the cause are humans and their activity. The effect is the body side of the, of the organism, and the idea is that you've put the verb as decreases, so you've given a direction, an idea of what might be going on. The scientific question is not only used to build a recipe to investigate relationships between cause and effect, it can be used to help in the writing or the communication of the results. Scientists will want to communicate cause and effect in the title. So let's look at whether or not they're doing a good job. Here are 10 different titles, and the students individually should look at those titles and put a circle around the causal agent and a square around the effect in the sentence. And then also note the verb. The interaction of drought and habitat explains space time patterns of establishment in Saguaro. That is, I believe, an oyster. Is that right? Does anybody know if that's an oyster? Doesn't matter. A cactus, yes. Saguaro cactus. Okay. The interaction of drought and habitat. That's some marine biologists for you. <laughs> Doesn't really matter because we can figure out what the effect is on, right? What's the causal agent in this title or agents? Drought and habitat. So drought and habitat. So they can look at two things. I asked you in your sentences just to have one causal agent, but you can have two, you can have three. And they chose to look at two. And they clearly explained it. And what is the response variable? Space time patterns and establishment. Right. So they're looking some kind of feature of this cactus and how it's changing over time. Pretty straightforward. I'm so passionate about this particular lesson because I feel like there are so many smart students that are in science that get out of science because they're intimidated about coming up with a novel question. It's so overwhelming and there's not much mentoring about how to do that. It's supposed to be magical. Either you have the talent or you don't. And that's not the case. Like sports or any other activity, I think, a practice and understanding of the methods that you'd go through to come up with that skill or that novelty takes practice and takes hard work, but you can do it.